Okay, hello everybody. This is Mike here again. So I'm doing my continued series of videos on uh, intro to programming and robotics. Uh, today I'm going to try something a little more difficult, uh, a little higher skill level. Uh, I'm still going to use the uh, Microbit by BBC and Mako by Microsoft, but now I'm going to introduce a uh, line following robot. Uh, that uses the micro bit as the controller. Um, I think it's a really cool combination uh, of all three together, work really well together and make it easy to do programming uh, of robotics and line following and other stuff. I think this is a really cool combination. So I'm using the McQueen Plus from uh, DFR Robot. You can see him down there getting ready to demonstrate my line following code. So I've kind of worked on line following, uh, but I, I think this is a, a great step for kids. Uh, one of the first steps a lot of kids do in uh, learning how to program a robot to do autonomous navigation. And I think this combination is really cool. So let me show you real quick. This is my backup, uh, McQueen Plus. I haven't connected the wheels and the, the upper chassis with a sonic sensor, but has a really big, huge battery. But the cool thing is on bottom of the robot, I hope you can see it here. Maybe I'll show it down here. It might work better. So it actually has multiple line following sensors. If you can see it, there's a, uh, there's actually six all together, four on top. L1 and L2 are in the middle. These middle two sensors, this one right here, R1, L1, L2, and R2 right there. And then on the sides, These two sensors here on the sides are actually R3 and L3. So it actually has six line following sensors all together. LED, uh, little LEDs, grayscales, whatever you want to call them. So <clears throat> the outer ones and the four ones. Right now I'm only using the two inner, uh, inner sensors. But so I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking right now, uh, I'm going to, uh, this is sort of like the intro. So this is the first uh, beginner program line following. So I think I'm going to work on developing software that uses all six sensors, line following sensors. Right now I'm going to just use R1 and L1. Okay. So let me share my screen. So you can see this is uh, make make code. Let me start from the beginning here. So this is make code by Microsoft. It's a great way to program the micro bit, get started in programming. So here's my line following robot program that I've already done. They're already kind of tested. So I'm going to kind of show you what it does and uh, some of the issues I'm having with it. And, and then hopefully, like I said, we can improve it, make it better for the next video. You don't need this example micro bit because it really doesn't do anything. So it gives you more room. So the first thing you need to do, I've already done this, but the first thing you need to do because McQueen has some, uh, uh, basically a library extension that you need to add for it. So click on extensions, type in McQueen, pretty simple. Search for it. No, nah, that's funny. What happened?
I don't know. Okay. So <clears throat> there's two type, there's two McQueens. I got the McQueen Plus. So you just click on that and add the extensions. Okay, and then you get the, you can see here the McQueen Plus. These are for all the different sensors, online falling, infrared stuff you got for it. And then uh, McQueen IR. Okay. So what I did was I did a very simple Little program for line falling. I got a forever loop. You can see right there. Then I put an if else statement. And very simple. If the L1 sensor is returning a one, which means it's uh, the sensor is not returning an infrared because it's being absorbed by the black line, then basically the L1 and LR1 are on the line. That means you just move straight forward. So I got then I got the motors both going in the same direction, rotate forward at the same speed. I can play with the speed a little bit, but uh, right now I have it set on 60. And uh, max is 255. So not quite halfway. Then if both sensors are not uh, if one or both sensors are not on the black, uh, then we drop down into the else statement. And there, are, this is probably going to make some improvements on. But right now, my uh, uh, inside else, I've got line falling. Uh, the L1 sensor is equal to zero. This means it's on the white area of the map now, uh, and the R1 is still on the line. So where what, what I'm trying to get it to do is I'm trying to get it turn <clears throat> right. So I've increased the speed of the uh, left motor. Still rotating forward. And I've decreased the speed of the right mower. So I want both motors to keep going forward, but I want it, it, it to turn in. So this is my initial code. I might come up with better ideas later uh, for, for, uh, for part two and maybe in part three. So if this is not correct, if this if is not, uh, both sides are not true, then I drop to the next if statement and check that. And if the L1 is on the line, and the R1 is, is in the white area, then I want it to turn <clears throat> left. And I've done that by decreasing the speed of the left motor and increasing the speed of the right motor. So pretty simple, straightforward. It just drops out. Um, if these four conditions aren't met, it just drops out. So we can play around and test other different conditions to see if we make it better. So I've already downloaded this code to the McQueen. Oh, I can show you JavaScript real fast. It's even smaller, even more uh, con uh, condensed. Um, so this is basically just your forever loop. So if so this is the uh, this is the if the main if if the McQueen plus and you read the uh, Re patrol, which is the calling <clears throat> the method. Then, if the then you basically assign it to the L1. It says L1 is equal to equal to one, and call on the uh, re patrol method. Then, if uh, R1 is also equal to one, then you just motors go forward. Kind of kind of straightforward, pretty easy. Here's the drops of the else and the two ifs. If uh, if the L1 is zero and R1 is one, then same as the blocks code example, you try to turn uh, right. And if that's not if this if is not true, then you you go to this if and you say if uh, <coughs> If, if the uh, L1 sensor is equal to one and the R1 sensor is equal to zero, then you try to turn left. Pretty simple. So <clears throat> when you're teaching yourself and other kids uh, and kids 
how to code with blocks, it might be a good idea just to look at the JavaScript code because it's real easy to do. You just you just toggle it and kind of see how the JavaScript code works. So that way uh, you start uh, you can learn some JavaScript too, which is pretty cool. So uh, I've downloaded code to the McQueen Plus. So let's turn it on and see what happens. So I'm going to have it basically go counterclockwise this time. So make sure that the sensors are both on the black line. So we can see this. I'll turn it on here in the back. So you can see it's correcting. It is trying, it's doing a pretty decent job actually of correcting itself. So whenever this sensor is in the white, it tries to turn in uh, to turn right. Now it does this, it does this all the time. It, it will go it will go perfectly fine for a while, then it gets sort of like gets confused and stops. So I have to figure out why that happens. Okay. So let's grab the little guy. Let's turn him off. And let's try to go the opposite direction. I think this is actually counterclockwise. That was clockwise. All right. See how he does the other one. So that's like I'm saying, doesn't seem to like this direction. Nope. So this is one of the issues I've, I've found with the little guy. He does he does pretty decent clockwise, but he struggles on counterclockwise. So I'm going to have to. That's the uh, that's the improvements I'm going to have to make uh, to the code. You would think the code would work both directions, but for whatever reason, it doesn't. So I think this is a great. Doesn't even can't even complete that one loop that direction. I don't know if it's an issue with the robot or what the deal is. Let me try one more time. So let me show the little light. So I think the lights, I think the uh, returns happening, right? I don't know if it's a shadow or what exactly is going on. But it's pretty consistent, uh, not liking counterclockwise. Uh, let me show you the lights. You can see the lights will turn on if it's in the black area. The lights will turn on. Kind of help you do a diagnostic tests. Hope you can see that. It's kind of hard to see. I may have to do some calibration. I'll read out more. So I hope you saw that. So it, it, with anything in robotics, it's going to have to be some testing and some experimentation and so on to see if I can figure out why. Uh, but I, 
I've I had this problem since I yeah, uploaded this code. So the now I need to figure out why. Okay, cool. Like I said, this is probably uh, uh, gonna have to do uh, line following version episode two. Okay, cool. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Hey, let me stop sharing my screen. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, it, this is probably not gonna help you learn how to do line following because obviously uh, I still have a lot to learn about it, but very cool. So if you have any hints to suggestions, uh, ways to program it better, uh, questions, please leave them uh, in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. And like I said, I'm gonna work on episode two of Robot Line Falling. So cool, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Uh, bye everybody.